Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today on our crypto journey. We have a special guest, Fran from Dasset, and he will be chatting to us about uh, the New Zealand stablecoin. I will be answering any questions, so please feel free to pop them in the chat and um, we'll get them answered for you. Thank you, Fran, if you want to take it away. Thank you, Julia. Great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. I've joined off two monitors so that I can try and share my screen here at just a moment. Okay, so quickly, just a quick introduction for myself. I'm the founder and chairman of the Techme group of companies. That includes being the co-founder with Stephen on Digital Asset Exchange, where I sit as chairman of the board. Meanwhile, over the years, we've built out a number of interesting infrastructure-focused businesses for the Techme group. One of those is a stablecoin business, or what some refer to as a real-world tokenization or real world asset tokenization business. And that was created over 18 months ago. And today I want to share with everybody how we are cooperating with DASIT to help beat, uh, help Kiwis beat inflation, right? So, gonna need to move that. <laughs> So the fact is that uh, the 109-year-old uh, central bank system is kind of running out of gas. Um, we removed ourselves from the gold standard during Nixon's era in 72, three, something like that. Um, we ended up printing endless money and entering the era of uh, rampant money printing and uh, you know, with the side effect of devaluing major currencies. That started with the GFC back in 2008. Something in the order of 40% uh, of all dollars in, the, in existence were printed in the last two years, right? So they've literally doubled the money supply, and that has a direct impact. One is that the system is full of cash, cash looking for a home, looking for yield, um, and a way to avoid uh, inflation that we were promised is very much transitionary, transitory, sorry. So things are going to get worse before they get better, and uh, we've cooked up a method to avoid um, the loss of your purchasing power. You know, hundred dollars in your bank account uh, will now buy you only ninety-two dollars worth of stuff at the end of the year. I put here five point nine percent inflation, but the reality is that an hour ago. The Consumer Price Index for New Zealand just printed its latest statistics and we're sitting at 6.9%. So uh, it's getting up there, folks. So if only there was a way to earn more interest than inflation. Well, there is. So let me talk to you about uh, turning your dollars into tokens to start saving. So the first product of uh, Tickament is a one-to-one -one backed stable coin. Some of you are probably hopefully familiar with the concept of stable coins like US dollar tether that's had a bad rap or USDC that's now sitting on billions of dollars. Um, once you digitize something in the real world like dollars, you can program it on the blockchain. It becomes very useful. It opens up the whole world of DeFi. So, what we have done is created, um, we wanted to avoid the legacy way of running a monetary policy. And so we don't practice fractional reserve practices. When you deposit a dollar into Tickament, there is a dollar in a what's called a bearer trust account that we can't touch and you can't touch. Um, it's audited by EY and uh, we only ever mint one token for every dollar that hits the account. Um, so programmable money is smart money, and I want to show you a very simple method of how to use, um, how to embrace the first use case that we have created for New Zealand dollar stablecoins. But firstly, just to give you a bit of an idea, <clears throat> uh, here is some information on the top stablecoins out there. So Tether, for example, um, enjoyed over $59 billion dollars of uh, 24 hour trading volumes, right? Across 349 exchanges and it has a market capitalization. In other words, this $82 billion sitting in bank accounts somewhere uh, representing that stable coin. Uh, so it's widely used, it's already well adopted. Um, I think people are becoming quite 
you know, used to using stable coins. We pay all of our international contractors in stable coins just because it's super cheap and quick to perform international payments if the recipient will accept, um, you know, some form of stable coin. And since we've created the New Zealand dollar stable coin, we've started to pay New Zealand dollar based costs offshore and locally in stable coins as well. Again, simply because it's so quick and cheap to transact. Uh, there's a list of others. You've got USDC, you got Binance, and then you've got some of the more decentralized ones that are yet to really prove themselves, uh, such as DAI out of Maker and Terra uh, USD. So billions of dollars have migrated out of the fiat system and into stable coins. It means that you can pay anyone anywhere in the world instantly and for low costs. Uh, you can use stable coins as collateral for trading, borrowing, et cetera. And of course, um, programming your money to work for you, which uh, is about staking. So super quickly about the company, um, Ticker Mint is the issuer of NZDS. Just think of um, Ticker Mint as a mint, a bank of sorts, where a financial service provider licensed for the Financial Markets Authority. Um, you know, why would users trust sent wiring in dollars and receiving magical internet beans from us the trust factor is incredibly important we spent 18 months putting together a um, gold standard of how to operate a stable coin business before we even minted our first token the compliance factor um, was a was a serious um, foundational layer that we had to implement before we could get to the fun stuff so as we said, NZDS is one-to-one -one held on trust in a New Zealand bank, 100% collateralized. Uh, our initial mint is through uh, the Ethereum blockchain or an ERC-20 token standard. We have decided right at the beginning after doing our due diligence that we would go with the Circle code base. So Circle is what USDC and its billions of dollars uh, deploy. It's becoming a bit of an international standard, and uh, users, um, sorry, regulators and, and uh, uh, legislators in many different areas are looking at USDC as the gold standard of how to issue stable coins. So we want it to be compliant with what we believe would be the future standard for stable coins. As I mentioned, we, we do what's called proof of reserves, but not just auditing that, yes, we have a dollar for every token that's minted, but also auditing our process, auditing our um, issuance, redemption, you know, minting, burning, uh, counterfinancing of terrorism, you know your customer, anti-money laundering, all of those processes are also audited. NZDS is not a security, and that's why we spent so much time putting the foundation in place properly under the New Zealand law. The opinion was provided by Minter Allison Rod Watts, which is a um, major international firm with offices in Auckland. And uh, the NZDS are redeemable for New Zealand dollars. So you can actually call the Mint and say, I want my money, and we will wire you your dollars back to your bank account once you've sent us your tokens. But for retail, for everyday users, um, if you engage with Tickermints directly, there's a minimum uh, requirement of 100,000 New Zealand dollars to transact. Through DASIT, uh, we have listed the New Zealand dollar stablecoin against the New Zealand dollar, and we are making it more liquid over the course of the next couple of weeks so that anybody can come along and buy or sell instantly New Zealand dollar stablecoin with New Zealand dollars. So here's the basic process. Anybody can create an account on Desit. I'm sorry, that should really say Desit. So you deposit some funds into your Desit account. You buy some New Zealand dollars. You go to DFX.finance. You stake your New Zealand dollars. You claim your interest rate. And then you either withdraw back to your wallet or send the proceeds back to Desit. And you can initiate a bank transfer back to your bank account. Uh, again, for larger sums, you can go directly to the Mint. And uh, just today, I checked before the presentation, and <laughs> the interest rate is sitting at a, a ridiculous 62.2%. So just looking at interest.co.nz, I see that the best bank deposits, if you lock up your funds with a traditional bank for six months or 12 months, is somewhere between 4 to 5%. 
right? Which is less than inflation. So we've just created a environment where basically there's no reason to have dollars in a bank any longer when you could custody them yourself, be your own bank, and earn far more interest rates than is available uh, within inflation is. So choose the brighter future, right? We represent the bridge between legacy world and this new exciting decentralized financial worlds and all of our infrastructure that we're building out is uh, to represent um, an e as easy as possible methods to transition to a glorious new future. I just wanna show you a couple of other uh, quick bits and pieces. Um, so Techme Capitals, uh, the main, uh, again, a, another financial service provider, FSP license for the FMA firm, where we offer and create DeFi products throughout the group. Um, this particular one we're making available through Dasset as its natural home to offer Kiwis to outperform inflation. We also create custom financial instruments. Uh, we structure a lot of deal flow. Uh, lots of startups. We've raised over $500 million between 35 customers over the last six years. We do what's called over the counter trading, which is also available on Dassets, where you can buy blocks of uh, you know larger volumes of uh, various coins. Um, and we do a bit of uh, funds management where we actually um, actively trade um, and buy into various deal flow with um, 500 and 400% returns in the last two funds over their lifetimes. Our team is um, a lot of people in the legacy world that have done their uh, stint around, you know, Singapore, London, New York, et cetera, in finance, compliance, um, business, et cetera, come home to New Zealand, um, start a family, so on and so forth. And they would normally need to go back to Brussels or London or whatever to find an exciting business that is pushing the tempo on the technology and the financial side. So all of these people have had overseas experience, have come back and um, have become part of the Tecumi family to build alternative or parallel systems and infrastructure in the high tech, uh, the, the cutting edge of the blockchain space. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, there's probably a ton of questions. I made this presentation purposefully very short so that we could get on with uh, with questions. And I Thank see you, that. Um, yeah, I'll leave it to you. Yeah, we've we've got some here. So um, Gary would like to know how can so much interest be paid in this form from new tokens being created, and will this be available from other exchanges? Okay, so you would have noticed that on one of the slides. Let's see if I can go back super quickly. Um, Sorry, that one. So you'll see that there's currently two and a half million USD worth of uh, capital enjoying this very large interest rates. If we were to increase that to say 25 million, these rates would be about uh, 25, 35% or thereabouts. If we were to increase these rates, uh, the uh, deposits levels to say 50 or 100 million, they would probably compress down to about 12% or thereabouts which is still damn good embedded in inflation. And we do expect that once people clue on that this is a system that works and is offering such yields, that um, the amount of deposits are going to explode and the interest rates will compress, which is fine. Now to directly answer, how does the uh, interest rate actually uh, occur? So some clever person a few years ago invented a piece of code called the automated market maker amm right it's like a crypto exchange like um uniswap and sushi swap and all these silly names for these multi-billion dollar uh, swap facilities in a conventional world you would have brokers inter-dealer brokers and a whole raft of middlemen between countries and participants when they want to turn their say new zealand dollars to Japanese yen or euros or USD, so on and so forth, right? That's the multi-trillion dollar FX market, foreign exchange market. And so all of those middlemen get paid. But now with stable coins in a digital medium on an automated market maker, there are no humans to eat up those fees, those swap fees, right? So um, Julie, if I send you, you know, 
10 bucks um, in, in, in New Zealand dollars and you send me back $6.50 US dollars, um, there's an automatic fee that is generated. And instead of that going to all of those many middlemen, that's where interest rates are extracted from, right? So DFX itself is a decentralized money market and fees are created um, when people swap, uh, you know, for just regular business as usual, transferring one currency into another. And then when you come along and offer to uh, deploy some capital, some NZDS and some USDC into this pool, you are uh, providing liquidity or liquidity partner in this process. So your risk is basically um, the USD NZD fluctuation and the rates. And then as people fluctuate, um, that the slippage goes down the, the larger the pool is. That means that I could send you a million bucks and you could send me back whatever the right amount of USD is, if, if that's what we're doing. And my fee for performing that swap would, would compress uh, because it's more liquid. But there's still a fee and that fee uh, effectively is how the interest rates occur. The founders of the DFX platform that we're partnered with have then layered on top of that a mission of their own native governance token called the DFX token, which bumps up and surplants, uh, so, so, you know, supplements those interest rates to bootstrap interest uh, and, and adoption. So that's how we got the rates very high. Um, because pe more people are recently using the FX, generating more swap fees, and um, uh, that also pushes the value of their token up, which increases the interest yields. So I hope that answers your question. It can get really complex uh, in the background, but I'm excited because um, the money that you deploy as a, as a, mar as a liquidity provider uh, to stake to get this interest it's not used by some investment bank to go and speculate on equities or some other stuff, right? When you deposit for six months or 12 months with a bank, you have no idea what they're doing, right? Not really, right? They'll, they'll rehypothecate that money into a diversified strategy and basically try and make more money than they're paying you in interest. And all those middlemen in between, uh, you know, really whittle down how much interest rate they can offer the end consumer. Okay. Um, also, Jonathan would like to know how do you how is the interest paid out? So you have to claim it, right? Um, Sam, would you like to elaborate on that one? Yeah. Yeah. So you just basically log in. It's a web-free login, which means you log in to DFX or Finance with your MetaMask wallet or uh, Trust wallet or whatever the preferred uh, wallet you use is. That wallet needs to contain your stable coins. Um, so you add liquidity. Uh, you sign a transaction and say yes, I approve this transaction. And then once you've got some liquidity in there, you'll see that you've now got a balance of what's called, excuse me, LP tokens. And a little window that'll show you how much interest you're earning. And then you can take that interest and uh, sell it for New Zealand dollars on that same platform. So you can log in daily, hourly, weekly, monthly, and then convert your uh, uh, yield into New Zealand dollars and then either compound your interest that way by adding how much you have, or uh, you know you take the interest component off, sell it down, and then just take that off the table. It's it's really self service uh, and up to each user. Okay, and um, will this be uh, available as replay? Um, Bill would like to replay. Know. Yeah. What do, you, what do you mean replay? Sorry, like I'm you want to not, copy this presentation or? I'm not too sure what he means by that. Uh, let me just. Uh, also, Chris would like to know um, what do you recommend when it comes to tax time? Uh, um, that's always a fun one, right? So, yeah, it is. <laughs> We spent a lot of time working with uh, the head of, uh, you know, the, the, the cybercrime investigative unit at the New Zealand Police, at the head of crypto at the IRD, at uh, with the presentations in the early days to every single bank in New Zealand's executive team. Um, we'd like to think that we're responsible for why New Zealand doesn't have GST on crypto. Um, when it comes to 
annual tax, you know, really you need to get your own personal tax advice. Um, it should be not dissimilar to whatever the tax treatment is if you were to have a bank deposit with, you know, interest payments at a conventional bank. Okay. Um, all right, what other questions do we have here? Uh, can I access this from the UK? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, so look, the key is get your hands on some New Zealand dollar stable coins. Mm. Uh, for wholesale, you can get it directly through the Mint on takeamint.com. We recommend that everybody just goes to dasitx.com if they don't have an account already, obviously. Mm. Get yourself some NZDS there, withdraw it to your wallet, and then it's up to you, right? So if you're in the UK or you're in Paraguay, it doesn't matter. You can access dfx.finance. If you've got NZDS, you can stake it, you can earn interest you know, from the beach or from the office anywhere in the world. Great. Um, Ange would like to know, what are the implications of an unbalanced fund? It means that swapping between USDC and NZDS is more expensive in one direction than the other. So this is part of our teething issues at the moment that we have to manually cycle as our market makers get up and running. So I think they're actually paying you to buy NZDS from the platform. Um, if you come along with uh, New Zealand dollar stablecoin and USDC to get this interest rate, um, it doesn't matter if it's unbalanced. You you won't receive any um, additional fees because you're not swapping between the two. You're you're coming along with your own capital to add to it. So those ratios will stay the same. So currently, I think it's like two percent off being balanced. It should be a seventy thirty split. And we'll probably get it to about 60 40. And all that means is that when people swap between NZDS and USDC, um, their slippage, their fees for um, uh, performing that transaction are simply lower. Okay. Yes. Yes. So someone says it is confusing, but mm. um, once you get the hang of it, uh, you know, if you can hold tokens in your wallet, if you've set up a wallet, if you've got a Desert account, you can easily buy. NZDS, and then it's a couple of clicks. It's scary the first time, um, but it's a couple of clicks on DFX to log in and start staking. Now, either the DESA team or the Tickman team would be more than happy to handhold people that, you know, are nervous doing this for the first time. Mm -hmm. The key is that it's it's self custodial. It's in the ethos of the entire crypto space. You become, you know, the bank. You you take control of your own finances this way. Great. All right, I have a few more questions. Um, what has the Reserve Bank or any of the regulators said about NZDS? And also, do you, uh, we'd also like to know, is, will it be available on other exchanges? Um, Gary would like to know. Yes, and thank you, Brett, for posting a uh, uh, mm, DFX how-to guide in the chat there. So that was, that was two questions. Let me uh, start with the Reserve Bank. So mm -hmm. we talked to them before we uh, did anything. Um, and they um, wanted to make sure that people weren't confused with our brand versus, frankly, their brand, which is the New Zealand dollar. So um, we agreed to call it NZDS. It's distinctly different. It stands for stablecoin. Uh, we have good working relations and communications with all of the regulators. And we have for years since we've been in this industry from, well, the, 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 right at the beginning in 2010. So um, that hopefully answers that part of the question. The other is will we be listing on more exchanges? So uh, yes, um, there is so much I want to talk about for Tickament and NZDS. <laughs> uh, what I can say for now is that um, we need to build up interest across tier three, tier two, then tier one exchanges. Um, so that means going regional, like getting DASIT, NZD, NZDS, and then getting Bitcoin and Ethereum against our stable coin. So we're plugging in a market maker, hopefully early next week, or if not already, they will be live bringing liquidity to. Anybody that wants to trade Bitcoin and Ethereum for um, uh, our stablecoin. Um, 
we have dozens of DeFi integrations. There will be other platforms like DFX that will be offering interest rates, different types of interest rates, fixed rates, floating rates, different types of solutions. There's wallets providers that are deeply interested so that New Zealanders, you know, I could say, Julia, here's that 20 bucks a year, boom, free instant transfer, P2P, B2B. Uh, so there's there's more yield, more DeFi. There's more uh, uh, payments orientated solutions coming and partnerships for everyday use of NZDS. And then there's certainly more centralized exchanges, the bigger exchanges that are taking an interest in this. Um, so over the next six months, we should see a lot more listings, a lot more DeFi, uh, borrowing, lending, staking, payments, wallets, all of that fun stuff for NZDS. Okay, great. Um, Bill would like to know how quickly will Dasset transfer funds to a bank account when he sells crypto? That would be a Dasset question. Um, so as chairman, I'm specifically not operational. My role is governance and uh, I have to be hands off and eyes on sort of thing. Um, right. you, you might be a better place to answer uh, yes, that. Yes, I, I can answer that. So I th um, it will be between two, I think two working days to get into your bank account? Um, yes. So hopefully that. Um, we've, okay, our next question. Is, uh, expansion to other exchanges won't change the value of NZDS. Will it reflect as good returns for liquidity providers? Sorry, which, is, which question was that? Uh, from Brett, uh, expansion to other exchanges won't change the value of NDS. Will it reflect as good returns for liquidity providers? He'd like to know. I don't think I quite understand the question, but um, the, the pick, the one dollar to one token, doesn't doesn't change ever. It doesn't matter how many token uh, exchanges we list on. Um, the yield simply goes down. So DFX is one partner. We don't own DFX. We did our technical and commercial due diligence on DFX, and we decided to go ahead because they passed all of our uh, requirements. And their solution, uh, you know, in, in partnership with us, is providing this ridiculous 60 something percent interest rate at this time. Um, if more people deposit, that interest rate will go down, um, but still it's going to be double digit and then better than inflation. And that's the point. And then other exchanges like Celsius, for example, uh, they will probably offer a fixed rates. They'll just give you 10% flat and then they will use that money to extract yield from arbitrage and borrowing and lending. They have a different way to generate yields. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Um, and Jonathan would like to know, can I operate this all from my Dasset account, which Obviously, you won't be able to answer. And no, completely separate uh, DFXs if you're if you're staking. Um, so he would be using a different uh, a different um, platform altogether. Yeah, you'd, you'd wire dollars to Desit. You'd buy yeah. NZDS there. You'd withdraw it, and then Correct. you'd stake it on VFX stock finance. Yes, great. Um, I see a question more questions about... I haven't answered. Let's have a look. I see one about supporting different blockchains like the BSC network. Aha, uh -huh, yes. Uh, yep, so it's just all demand driven. Um, USDC and USDT, they're available on Phantom, BSC, uh, I think a dozen or so blockchains. And it's just purely demand driven. So if somebody wants to buy five, 10 million bucks worth of NZDS um, and they specifically want it on a on a specific blockchain, then you know it needs to be big enough for us to justify the quite uh, heavy costs of integrating a new blockchain and supporting the compliance process for a different chain. But uh, that's exactly what happened with the other major stable coins, and we assume that we will be multi-chain over the next few months as demand um, shows us which one to integrate in which order. Wonderful. Uh, okay. Got a few more questions for you. Um, <clears throat> what do you think the expected market size of NZDS will be this year or next year, Fran? Well, it'll be a bloody shame if we were sitting on less than a billion dollars in the bank uh, and a billion tokens floating around. I mean, every 
you know, think about the island's nations. If they had an off-ramp at their end, uh, right now, uh, ANZ and BNZ have to freight physical pallets of cash back to New Zealand and back to Australia from Rarotonga and other places when tourists show up and spend cash, right? So this technology leapfrogs the uh, current kind of trade finance and banking system because you can make payments within seconds for very, very cheap. So it's great for remittance. I can pay Australians, New Zealand dollars. I can pay anybody in the world, New Zealand dollars. They can convert it at their end, um, you know, in, in a growing amount of ways, which is what we're doing. So you got payments, remittance, um, interest, DeFi, uh, staking, so on and so forth. That's a lot of demand. So as we get apps and wallets to integrate NZDS, as we uh, list on more exchanges as the markets become more liquid, it would create constant pressure for minting more and more tokens uh, in in the circulating supply. So, um, yeah, a, a stablecoin business, as long as it's as compliant as humanly possible and governed and managed, you know, well, um, is one of the easiest types of businesses in the industry to grow radically quickly. So we're very excited. Okay. Um, Ange would like to know, what should you look for in a staking platform? This is a good question. There is some, um, yeah, I'd like to elaborate, Brian. Yeah, who are they? How long have they been around? Who invested into them? And the single most important thing is, have they had their code audited by a third party? Aha, uh -huh. and how would one find that out? Normally, they'll display it and boast about it on their website okay. with a oh, link right. to the audits report. So we audited DFX ourselves because one of our businesses is Blockchain Labs. But, um, you know, we needed to be comfortable before anybody else became comfortable using them and promoting this type of activity. You can also insure your capital. It'll cost you about one and a half per percent per annum, but you can actually um, insure against um, technical failure. So if the platform is hacked, you can insure the deposits that you made. And that's available through a couple of um, DeFi insurance providers. Um, okay, that um, sounds like a good idea. Yep. Okay, do we have any more questions? any chance if we have we answered all the questions if please um please uh yell out if we haven't um in the chat and we can get them answered for you pretty sure we have but oh no we've got one more here bill is the percentage earning uh earned just for the new zealand stable coin or for other crypto eg bitcoin as well there is no bitcoin staking on dfx i don't think anyone is offering uh staking for bitcoin at this time um, if you go to the DFX platform, it has Canadian dollars, euros, Singapore dollars, um, rubles, and Turkish lira, and they all vary in their interest rates that they're offering. So these are not products or services that either we or Desit is offering. Um, but you know, DFX as a decentralized money market, they only list stable coins. And so they will provide yield for various ones. We're obviously incentivized to help Kiwis outperform inflation and focus on the NZD uh, pool. I have a question, just to elaborate on, on what Ange said about staking platforms. There are a few out there. How do you, how does, um, you know, the average person who's just come into their crypto journey decide which platform to use? Are there any, anything else that they should look for other than interest rates on, um, yeah, so oh. they know it's not a scam. Yeah. Because there so are look, a lot Stephen, of scams out there, isn't there, um, Fran? Oh, yeah, there's a never-ending amount of scams in the crypto space. Yeah. And as Stephen pointed out, you know, these, these rates are variable. So, you know, risk disclosures. Um, yeah, the, the they, variable they fluctuate rate, very greatly. So first and foremost, it's a, it's a variable rate. It's issued out in the form of the DFX governance token, which you need to then sell down to uh, get, get your New Zealand dollars interest rate. Um, we nor DASIT operate DFX. We looked at the technicals, the team, the investors, the backers, the uh, community, 
and the uh, utility of their governance token uh, for DFX. And we were, you know, happy with what we saw. When we look at any other platform, I mean, we are the ones that operate Tickament and create NZDS. So we do a lot of due diligence and uh, we also know exactly who is going to be available to stake with and when. If you're talking about staking other stuff that isn't NZDS, yeah, can I help you there? I, I can just say, look at the, the smart contract auditing first and foremost. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, well, that, that's sort of answered. I mean, uh, what else, like between, like you mentioned, uh, Celsius is a completely different platform altogether. Why did their rates not fluctuate like DFX does? So they do rehypothecate. You will send them your NZDS um, yep. and they will do whatever they want with it. So they will lend it out and they will market make and extract arbitrage. They will, um, uh, they will find yields themselves with your capital. And so they're only prepared to say, right, we're just offering you 10% and it's not in a different token. It's just, you know, 10% paid directly in New Zealand dollar stable coin. Um, but it's a different risk profile because they use your capital like a bank would use capital to extract yield from various types of activity, right? So we want uh -huh. multiple types of staking options for multiple partners. And then the uh, uh, users can choose uh, what suits them best. Okay. Uh, and she has another question. What does it mean that NZDS are not a financial product? It's not a financial product. Is it a market it a cap factor in volume of trade, she's asked? No, it's, well, I mean, it basically means it's not a security so that it can be listed on crypto exchanges. Uh, you don't need to be a wholesale investor simply for holding it and using it and, and receiving it and sending it to, you know, um, anywhere. Um, and yes, that theoretically massively um, assists the market capitalization of NZDS because it means we can list on hundreds of different crypto exchanges throughout the world. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, thank you, Fran. That was wonderful. Uh, does anyone have any more questions before we um, wrap up? Um, here's, let me just double check on the chat that we've answered everything. Someone asked if, uh, yep. if we and Dasset are two different entities. Well, Take a Mint Limited is a separate business or separate shareholders to Digital Asset Exchange. Yeah, I just happen to be chairman of both. Yep. All right. Um, I think everyone, we've answered everyone's questions. If we haven't, please, oh wait, we've got one more. If I stake, say, $50,000 in, in NZDS, when does it pay out the interest and will it be in NZDS? Great question, John. Yeah, so basically the interest is paid um, like second to second. Um, so you can log in and check how much you've accumulated um, over time. It's paid out in DFX token. Right, just to be very specific. Mm -hmm. you, to be even more specific, what you would actually do is you would get uh, your 50,000, you would buy, use half of it to buy US dollar stablecoin and half for New Zealand dollar stablecoin. You would go to the platform, you would stake it, you will receive DFX token, you would sell DFX token. Uh, it's quite liquid. And then you can choose to top yourself back up or just take your interest payments out. And it's always paid out in a DFX token. There isn't an, an option to be paid out in stable. Great. Okay. Cool. Other platforms like Celsius will offer direct interest payments in yes. the DS. Yep. What do you think is better? Just out of curiosity. I mean, Which... a DFX, like a token, a DFX token, for example, has the, you know, it has the, it could, it could rise, so you, you're potentially making more interest. Am I right? Well, I am licensed to give financial advice, but I choose oh, yes. not to give financial <laughs> advice. Um, okay. It just, but, you Fair know, enough. basically your, your risks are the New Zealand dollar, US dollar fluctuation and uh, the DFX token that you're being paid is um, interest and it's variable value. So um, if you want to be ultra conservative, you would log in once a week, uh, once a day, claim it, sell it back from New Zealand dollars, 
and just lock it in to New Zealand dollars. Great. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, right. Well, we've got another question. Is there a chance to auto reinvest a DFX token earned from interest? Great. Great yeah, question. We're, we're, we're asking DFX if they can install something called auto compounding, right, as a feature. Ah. That just takes your interest, auto sells it, turns it back into you know the right ratios of USDC and NZDS, and it tops it up for you. So um, I think they're rolling out like a V2 in a couple of months, so that may be an option then. Oh, wonderful. Cool. Um, any more questions? Anyone? Any more questions, guys? Had some great questions today, haven't we? Thank you, Fran. You've been wonderful. I think you um, I, uh, explained that really clearly, and uh, because it can be very complicated, especially for um, you know the people that are new to crypto, it's yeah. So you, you explained it very simply, which was which was great. Um, yeah, I think we try and keep it questions? simple on the on the face value. Again, if um, if users uh, you know a bit nervous or or want some assistance, um, either that the. the Asset or the Tickament team is um, able to assist. We just can't offer actual financial advice um, or custody your funds and stake for you. Um, if somebody has bajillions of dollars, they want a turnkey solution and have us stake it for them, we will actually do that, but that requires a minimum of a million uh, at a time. Okay, and when will you be able to borrow NZDS and DeFi? Do you know? So that is an integration that's coming with a very, very large, uh, well-known brand in this industry. Uh, can't talk about it much, but Exciting. in the next three months, we hope to be able to have the ability for borrowing and lending uh, on a platform as well. Great. Cool. Something to look forward to. Lots going on. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Fran. You were wonderful. We'll have to have you back again sometime soon. It's been a pleasure. Um, well, thanks, everyone. And I think if Appreciate anyone it. has any ideas, that if they'd like to know about a topic or um yeah you can you can definitely reach out to us and, and give us some ideas for the next crypto journey uh which we hold every thursday at 12 30 um every second week so we'll see everyone back here in a couple of weeks awesome all right thanks everyone